So good morning, Cat Hats, and thank you so much for joining us here on WALK this morning. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome, welcome to WALK. So please start off by telling us about DISCO. I know that this has to do with your work with the disability community on behalf of the Harris campaign. So tell us, what is your goal with the with the DISCO? So we have um, managed to move from the National Council on Disability to a caucus, which is great because it means we're getting more attention from the DNC. Um, I was at the DNC and a lot of us were there. Um, and we have two different arms. We have the political arm, which is intended to have us heard and seen and have candidates see us and, and have platforms for us. And then we have a fundraising arm so that we can help. And to date, I think we've raised over $1.2 million wow. uh, for the campaign. Um, and then I also wow. do state voter protection work, but yeah, um, we're really excited about that piece. Wow. That is quite impressive. $1.2 million. That is really awesome. Okay. And so you also do work with voter protection. Tell me about that as well. Okay. So since about 2019, 2020, it became very obvious that these elections were not only going to be close, but there were going to be a lot of factors that unfortunately uh, tend to disenfranchise marginalized communities. Um, purging, my mom actually got purged uh, last cycle. Um, voter suppression, inaccessibility, uh, we had one of our members break down in tears at one of our comps meetings recently, and it was because all he is in Minnesota, which is a very friendly state for, for disab disability community people. But what he said is that a lot of them don't know how to vote, and it's not obvious how to get help. And I remember helping a member of my family mark their ballot because they're developmentally disabled, but it isn't obvious. So that's sort of what we're working towards is getting out the vote, but also helping people understand that we have resources, <laughs> you know, they don't have to do it all alone. Well, that is really good to know because I think that too many times we, um, forget that there's a disability community and a community of people who might actually need help. And sadly, you know, we don't think about that community, you know, unless like you, someone like you, you work with those people or you know someone, you don't know, they don't always come to mind, but sadly, you know, they're forgotten. So it's so great to know that this organization and what you're doing um, is helping, you know, with people who want to vote and would like to be able to vote, but might be facing some hardships with doing that. So I know that you sent me some flyers earlier this week um, to let us know about your efforts with the Get Out to Vote and how people with disabilities can get help with voting. So you had a flyer that I saw that broke down the numbers of like, 29% or one in four Georgians can decide this election this year. That's a pretty significant number, 29% or one in four Georgians. Uh, one in four people, rather, can, can decide the election in Georgia this year. So what do you think, um, why do you think that some people neglect to think about the disability community? Well, it's harder for us to be visible, right? So um, we have a much higher rate of poverty than our able counterparts. So it's harder for us to raise money to say attend events. And just by virtue of having some kind of limitation or disability, a lot of us, it's not so easy to do like a million person or even like a 10,000 person march. And so I think it's not an issue of people not caring so much as they just don't know or see it so much. Mm -hmm. That's why the caucus is really important. And that's why we've ramped up our efforts on this one. Wow. Well, you have done a great job. So do you know if the Harris and Waltz team is the first to actively support the disability community in this way? Well, she, in 2019, when she was running for president, was the first presidential candidate from any party to have a disability platform, um, which was released on the anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act, the 30th anniversary. 
and it was really comprehensive and they do have um, a set of, of policies for this cycle, some of which were not um, in last year's or last, I'm sorry, not last year's, last cycle's um, platforms, not because I think they, again, didn't care. These are people, um, Governor Walls and his, his wife, Gwen, they, they have a disabled son. Yes. Amal yes. Harris is not um, somebody who doesn't know about this yes. or care. These are people who do care and have done things. Uh, but in terms of what their proposed policies are, one of the really big ones is that she has proposed that Medicare cover home health care, mm -hmm. which is so important because we have caregivers for seniors, disabled people, and members who are uh, both communities, right? And they need good caregivers. But our caregivers currently, a lot of them are undertrained, and frankly, they're underpaid. Right. That they're getting paid minimum wage. That's about it. Yes. Um, and that, that's not enough. Yes. I spoke to a woman just the other day and she said she didn't know what to do because she's trying to take care of her parents, but she's also disabled and needs help. And they're trying to figure out if they should be selling one of their homes and her parents are seniors and that's just not right. Yeah, that's a tough, tough decision. So for the over 2 million dis disabled voters in Georgia, there is a website that they can visit um, if they wanted to get more information. Can you share that website with us? Uh, actually, there are several places. Um, oh, okay. One of them is IWillVote.com, okay. um, which if you visit your state, there's a drop down menu. If you visit the Georgia one, that's that's one of the ways you can do it. Um, they can also get live texting assistance because that's easier for some people. Right. They just have to text the word vote or if they want Spanish assistance, voto, um, to 70888. And then we do have a 24-hour national hotline, which is 833-336-8083. And there's a voter state protection hotline that's just for Georgia. So they have more specific information. And that number is 888-730-5816. Wow, thank you for that. So even parents who have sick children, like right now, say if a parent is in the hospital with their child who might be sick, even those parents still have an opportunity to vote through these means. Is that correct? We do. Um, if somebody is going to be hospitalized or their child is going to be hospitalized, you can apply for what's called an emergency absentee ballot. Um, it has to, the application has to be within five days of election day. So that's actually Halloween. Um, but the way to do it is to reach out to the county local election administrator or board of election or clerk, wherever is, is handling that type of thing. They do need to return their ballots by election day by 8 p.m., but that's the same for anybody. And they don't have to necessarily leave the hospital, which is something that's really important. I found a couple of good websites that help out with that specific process. Um, and, and one of them, sorry, it's a long one, it's but okay. I think it's important to have this information because you don't know if you or your child or, or another loved one will be sick and hospitalized. It's not something we really predict. Um, so what the, they need to do is uh, there, are, there are three websites I found helpful. Um, I'm going to put two of them in order in terms of okay. which I found the most helpful for this issue. Okay. Um, the first one is www.voteamerica.org and then slash emergency hyphen absentee hyphen ballot backslash. Okay. So I know that's long, but that's an important one. Yes, it is. The second one is uh, called www.patientvoting.com. And then it's quite easy because it's just backslash Georgia. Okay. And then the third one is the iwillvote.com website. But the reason I recommended the other two, if possible, is because they that's their focus. Mm -hmm. is, is how to how to how to make sure that if you're hospitalized 
your child is hospitalized or if just something unexpected happens um, and you cannot do the, the typical process or maybe you missed the absentee ballot deadline. Mm-hmm. So I think it's, I think that that was the, was it the seventh? Um, it, it, you know, the mm-hmm. registration deadlines for a bit ago, et cetera, the absentee ballot application deadlines. You can apply on election day if you have to for the emergency process. Okay. Um, and what they'll need to do is fill out an absentee ballot form. And I, I know that some of the county parties help with this as well. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing that. Those are some very good websites that people would need to know because I think that most of them probably would not know that these um, websites exist to help them if they do need um, to be able to have access to voting. So do you know if the Harris campaign has any disabled people who are working on her campaign to raise awareness about the disabled community? Thank are you, you. Aware she has? They do. They uh, do? We actually, we, we, we collaborate with them. And I think that that's pretty amazing. So I don't know other campaigns that have that. So there is a disability campaign coordinator and lead who works with us. And that, that's a big, that's something. That's some that is something that's very impressive. It's very forward thinking, you know, it's very, very forward thinking because like you said, it's not that I think that people don't care about the disabled community. I think that just because they're just not paying attention or if it's not in front of them or they don't know someone who is a member of the disabled community, then maybe it's just not at the top of mind for them, but it's certainly not because um, they don't care. So I hope that they are voting blue since we all have seen and heard about the horrible and insensitive things that Harris's opponent has said about the disabled community. So I'm pretty sure that those who are working on her campaign are those who are definitely going to be voting with her. And I saw something um, that you sent me earlier this week that Fred Trump is working with your group as well on behalf of the disabled community. Yes, and that is on behalf of his son, William, I'm sure. Yes, he's actually been a disability rights advocate for a long time. And he and his wife, Lisa, both are, and they're very very helpful on that one day. We just hosted an event with them um, where he talked a little bit about his story, but then he did a Q and A. He's very open about it. And he's been open since I believe about July uh, when he told CNN, Sarah and Burnett that he's voting for Kamala Harris. Um, at the time we didn't know who her running mate was, yeah. uh, that he supports her, that he'll do whatever he can. So, and, and there's a reason for that, um, which I know that he talked to you about. Yeah, um, yeah. He did. He did. Well, that is great. And this is such great work that you're doing. And I really applaud the Harris campaign for reaching out to the disabled community and remembering them and and setting up these um, ways for them to be able to have access to voting, because that is so important. And especially with the kind of power that you have behind your community with the amount of money that you've raised. And I'm sure that the amount of people that you have been able to reach out to as well, you know, that is all very impressive work. I commend you, Kat. I know you personally, so I know what an awesome worker you are and what a great and very professional person you are. So you are a wonderful person for them to to have on their team. So thank you so much. And thank you again for sharing this information. We'll definitely get this posted on the WAOK website in enough time so that those people who might need help with um, getting access to the websites or calling some of the numbers that you mentioned, um, we'll make sure that we put those on the WAOK website. Um, do you have a number to share? There was, a, was there a number on one of the flyers that I thought that I saw? Do you have a number that you could share? Mm-hmm. There's the national and the Georgia voter protective hotline. I typically tell people to go to the state one just because they that's what they do is just Georgia. Right. And, and that is the number that's 888-730-5816. Okay. But there's also a national voter assistance hotline that's 24-7. So if that one for any reason, and I think it's pretty much 24-7 now, but just in case, um, 
there is an alternate number people can call, which is 833-336-8083. Um, and if they don't, for whatever reason, like they can't, some people can't call because they can't talk or um, they can't call because maybe they have anxiety about calling. So mm -hmm. we do have live texting. So it's not just like we text and hope to hear the next day. Yeah. It's actually yeah. just like the hotlines. And that's where um, for English speaking voters, they just text the word vote okay. to 70888. And for Spanish speaking voters, it's voto, uh, same, same place. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Cat Hats, thank you again so much for the work that you do and the work that you have done on behalf of the disability community. And thank you so much for sharing this with our WAOK audience this morning.